the way I see it, if these were his personal personal documents and or he's allowed to have these by the PRA, why would you need to ask questions about video footage? Why would you possibly move the documents when they are coming to retrieve them? To me, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, on top of that, why would you put two lower level employees in the position they're in if you did nothing wrong and these are your own, these are your personal documents? So you had the impression from the people around that Trump knew the things that went down were bad or illegal and he didn't want that on video. Oh, absolutely. I mean, why else would you needed to know the video footage? And then why were they calling and asking me, hey, why didn't you tell me that this guy was on video moving boxes? Wow. Uh, Butler added he does not believe the investigation is politicized and that if Trump genuinely believed he was not in the wrong, he should have just cooperated with investigators. Trump's co-defendants, Nada and Dio Oliveira, have pleaded not guilty to the related charges against them. And joining us now, former deputy chief of the criminal division for the Southern District of New York, Christy Greenberg. She's now an MSNBC legal analyst. And Christy, we'll get to the documents uh, case in just a moment. But I want to ask you about uh, the bond, um, 464 million and counting, that I think Trump has to pay by Monday. You can let me know about the, the deadline. But a number of things are going around. I've brought up, obviously, family members who have a lot of money, like his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, who received, I think, $2 billion from the Saudis. The Trump campaign sent an emergency memo to supporters via text on Wednesday, which included a message to Attorney General James, uh, quote, keep your filthy hands off Trump Tower. I don't know if he's going to try and get voters to help pay for this. If he gets someone to pay this for him, Christie, does he have to disclose that or how does it work? So he does not have to disclose that. There is not the requirement in the courts, at least, for transparency into what mm. the source of the money is. From the plaintiff's perspective, they just want to make sure the money is there. But obviously, it's a different question politically. Obviously, the American people with a presidential candidate want to know what the source of his money is, in particular, whether or not it compromises him uh, in, in his dealings with foreign governments, foreign leaders. Uh, it, it's a real national security issue. But at least from the legal perspective, no, it is, there's not going to be hmm. transparency. As to your question about the deadline, yes, the money has to be paid by Monday. He either has to get a bond or he has to put up the whole amount in cash. And, and I think that was a pack wow. Mika, that Mika brought up. First of all, Christy, we want to thank you for braving the cold weather outside to come in and endure the cold weather inside. <laughs> uh, there's a cold nor'easter. TJ, I know you're, like, like, I know you're running a little hot. Uh, but if we could turn the air conditioner off, that Working would be awesome it. here. It's like, seriously, I, we, you know, we will hand out Canada goose, not rice or uh, coats afterwards, if that's politically correct. Um, so $464 million. What happens if he can't come up with that money? So if he can't come up with that money, I assume that Tish James already has a plan in place. She has a list of what his assets are that she knows of from discovery in that case. What are the properties? What are the bank accounts? And she's going to look to put liens on those immediately. Right. She's going to look to freeze and to seize, right? To make sure that he, they're freezing those accounts so that he can't start moving money. Uh, and then really looking to get seizure warrants to seize so that So they seize can... and sells it? and gets money from that to get the $464 million? Well, right now, I mean, I think the, the key would be just making sure that you have enough to get the entire amount. But yes, once it's frozen, then she can take various enforcement mechanisms to go about seizing those, whether it's properties or bank accounts, uh, to actually get make sure that everything is in place, that she could actually seize it. So let, let, let's move to the Florida case. We, we, we heard from witness number five. Um, I'm a big, um, big defender of the federal judiciary. I always have been, even when they don't rule the way I want to rule, even when the Supreme Court goes their own way. I'm like, well, you know, they, it's how they've lived their whole lives. That's what they've talked about. If they're, they're more conservative or more liberal. 
I'm having a hard time defending Judge Cannon's actions, and not just because it's against Trump, but here's, here's somebody who's already been humiliated by the 11th Circuit, like one of the most conservative circuits in America. And I've, I've just got to say, her, her rulings are just mind-boggling. I don't understand them, and I'm not alone. A lot of legal experts are just completely perplexed. So... I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt initially, just she's a new judge, she's inexperienced, she's taking time, and she's trying to get it right. But she's getting it dead wrong. And every time she gets it dead wrong, it's always in Donald Trump's favor. I mean, just in the last month or so, we have a ruling where she is uh, ordering the identities of witnesses to be unsealed. There's no trial date. There is no right. need to be unsealing the identities and statements of witnesses who could be harassed and have a risk of harm. Then you have her recent non-ruling that she's going to kick the can down the road on whether or not the SB Act is vague. It's not vague. It's been, it's well-established law. Right. The terms are clear. It was clear to Donald Trump, who was told he couldn't keep the classified documents. That was a bad ruling. And then you've got your third strike, which is this recent jury instructions, which again, we don't have a jury. We're, we're, yeah, but, I, but like, she's basically saying Trump can decide whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants to do. Right. Well, what as is long that? as he said it was personal, he doesn't get oh. to, the PRA, whether or not something is personal or presidential is not the point. He's charged with committing violations of the Espionage Act, and nothing in the Presidential Records Act gives him authorization to have classified information. It's a red herring. If this were a law school exam, she would be failing. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, no, no law professor would ever put that down as a possibility, and I'm dead serious, because no student would be stupid enough, not even me in, in, in first-year class, to follow that rabbit trail, because... You no, know, the defendant can't determine the outlines of of of, of the the statute. I mean, and to say, that, oh, you just you know, Trump can decide. It means whatever he wants it to mean. It when, is insanity. When Judge Cannon was assigned the case, there were fears that she would rule in, in favorably for Donald Trump, and she's done nothing to disprove that.